Hey guys, you are watching My Psychology channel and today we are going to do a Q&A session about depressions and it's also part of our D project which uh, we, ha we had run it uh, in October to raise uh, awareness about depressions among general public so since some of you have asked some questions regarding depressions and today we have invited Missy Wong uh, she's a lecturer and also a clinical psychologist to answer some of your questions Hello everyone, um, it's really an honor to be working with my psychology this time uh, to raise awareness on depression uh, in this month, uh, especially because it's a mental health month as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that uh, we are getting more information about what depression is really like. So the first question from Emily Yi is, uh, can depression be completely clear? Um, when, when we look at cure for depression, I guess we're looking at treatment for depression. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to treatment, it depends on, let's say when you talk about clinical depression, whether or not it's um, mild depression or moderate to severe kind of depression. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's mild depression, m the m most common kind of uh, treatment would be psychotherapy or what they call talk therapy or counseling sessions. Uh, if it's more moderate to severe kind of depression, maybe they might con consider uh, medication and psychotherapy together, com combination of all these um, therapy, um, with these treatment options. Um, so whether or not it's possible to completely cure depression, the thing is there's actually very high relapse or recurrence rate of depression. Mm -hmm. If it's one episode of uh, depression in a person's life, the relapse rate is actually 50% mm -hmm. and, uh, within the next five years. If there's more than one episode of depression, then the relapse rate could go up to 80% or 90% in a person's life. And throughout a person's life, there could be um, five to seven episodes of relapse when it comes to, comes to depression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, which means, yes, it is possible to recover, or I would prefer you to use the word manage depression, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to recover from it. Okay, uh, second question is from Chloe. Is do most uh, people with depressions uh, attempt to commit suicide? Um, there is actually a very high rate for people with depression to attempt suicide. Mm -hmm. um, I think in, on average, um, there is uh, the people with depression is 25 times more likely than normal people to commit suicide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mainly because uh, the main theme of depression is that they feel low self-worth, mm -hmm. they feel a sense of hopelessness, they feel very low self-esteem and the way they view the world is um, sometimes very gloomy as well, a lot of negativity there. So um, not all people with depression become suicide, but it is a higher risk factor for suicide. Okay, so the third question is from Tang Li Wei, uh, okay. is depression uh, hereditary? Um, yes, in a way, uh, I think research showed that uh, if you have first degree relatives, meaning your parents mm -hmm. or your siblings who have depression, then uh, there's higher chances, maybe it's 1.53% uh, higher chance of you to have depression as well because there is actually genetic predisposition to depression too. A lot of people with the genetic predisposition to mental illness, whether mm -hmm. or not it's depression or anxiety or anything, um, they may not actually develop it if okay. they manage their life stresses. Uh, it really depends on the course of life, what is the maybe parenting styles, maybe mm -hmm. how is the a relationship like with other people, social support, uh, the resilience. Mm -hmm. So a lot of other environmental and um, other life stresses would determine as well whether or not this person would develop depression. Okay, so the fourth question from Tammy Sim is why mm -hmm. are there so many disorders comorbid with depression? So what do you think about this? Um, I think that one that has got highest comorbidity with depression is anxiety. Okay. And uh, I think generally there are maybe two or three main reasons to it. The first one is that uh, when you look at the because when we diagnose a person with depression or anxiety or any other uh, what you call uh, mental disorders, mm -hmm. we at least over here we refer to DSM a lot. <coughs> and in DSM there are actually a lot of overlapping in terms of the symptoms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for example, um, 
depressive ruminations in where, where people worry a lot, they keep thinking a lot about the things. Um, these kind of symptoms you may also find in people with anxieties as well. Mm-hmm. They also ruminate a lot about uh, future. Uh, for example, the lack of sleep, um, not, not able to sleep well, um, not able to focus, is, is, is in depression. And it's also apparent in people with PTSD as well. So there are a lot of overlapping. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's, that, that could be one of the reasons why we do find a lot of uh, comorbidity. Uh, a person who have gone through grief is that they would have depression. They might feel very, very low mood. and um, They might feel loss of interest in daily, daily, daily life. And at the same time, they might also feel um, anxious about future, anxious about losing another loved one as well. So how we respond to the stresses mm-hmm. is something that's very complex. The fifth question is from uh, Dashini Sindusha. So, uh, is it possible for the structure of the brain to shrink if a person has depressions? Uh, this, this is a very interesting one because mm-hmm. research has actually found that um, people with depression, their brain uh, does seem to shrink. Mm-hmm. It was not very clear to them uh, for a number of years why this happened. But I think recently, well not that recent as well, they found that um, when they compare people in the early stage of depression and people with um, multiple episodes of depression or a long term or people who have been in long term depression um, there is this part in the brain called hippocampus mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they find that the people with the early stage of depression the hippocampus is slightly smaller but when it compared with people with long term depression the hippocampus actually shrinks even more okay. so they, they do realize that it actually does have some effect on the brain in terms of shrinkage and the, the part that that is affected is uh, one of the parts is called the hippocampus which is um, also uh, responsible for new memory forming emotion regulations mm-hmm. um, which is why you might, you might hear sometimes people with long term depression sometimes they might uh, make complaints like uh, I feel like things are very blurred I feel a bit memory mm-hmm. it's, long, uh, it's not as, as intact okay. so that could be one of the reasons oh. This is from Ross Stevenson. Is it possible a person can be depressed but are still functioning in society and not realize it? Oh, it's, it's highly possible because um, when we talk about depression, uh, I think a lot of people just think, that, oh, if you are depressed, then you'll be staying all day at home, mm-hmm. um, sobbing and using a whole box of tissue paper and watching TV in a blanket mm-hmm. and uh, like, something like that or you'll be suicidal but then there are mild depression and moderate level depression as well i do have a lot of clients with a depression and they went out they still try actually to function in society by mm-hmm. masking their sadness mm-hmm. and they seem like just you and me but then actually inside they are suffering a lot so mm-hmm. it is still possible that they might seem that they are um, functioning quite well but then okay. when they go home they will still feel the sadness there's also another type of depression which is called dysthymia, mm-hmm. which is uh, like a lesser, it's a lower grade of depression, which is um, milder kind of depression, but it's mm-hmm. also more chronic. Mm-hmm. Um, people with dysthymia, they will still function quite well. Uh, it's more like they feel a chronic sense of melancholy and blueness in their life. Mm-hmm. So they are still functioning, but they are depressed as well. Because people with depression, um, they might slow down in a lot of their functioning, mm-hmm. cognitive functioning as well, especially. So um, they might be slower in terms of the processing, in terms of the thinking, decision making, mm-hmm. memory. They can't remember what you asked them to do yesterday. They may not be able to focus very well. So sometimes they may be perceived as being lazy, mm. um, being just finding excuses. Um, and um, because they, they also lack of sleep sometimes so when they go to work, they go to the school they might fall asleep a lot so they might be perceived as being um, yeah, just lazy you know, mm. and people just dismiss them like that so they do try to cope a lot oh. of them but then uh, this, all these things that I mentioned do affect their daily work and, mm. So the seven questions from Verena's show is uh, Is it possible a depression 
person, a person with depression will realize he or she uh, has depression disorder. Yeah, it's very highly likely, especially now uh, with more and more awareness on what depression is or is not. People sometimes can go internet uh, to look for the symptoms of depression mm-hmm. as well. So sometimes when they come, some of the clients that they come to me and they say, really told me that I have depression. Mm-hmm. Uh, then again, uh, sometimes when we try to self-diagnose, also there is, uh, you and me, we most of the time also have ups and downs mm-hmm. and it's not necessarily that we have depression. So uh, sometimes what happens is, um, client, they went online, they are going through the normal grief and they went and they search for symptoms and they find out, oh, I feel the symptoms of depression mm-hmm. and they, they, they get worried, oh my god, I'm having depression. Um, because they diagnose themselves. Um, it's good and bad. Good is that you have awareness of what you're going through mm-hmm. so that you seek help. But some, some of them also get a bit panicked that, oh my god, I'm having depression, mm-hmm. I'm supposed to do. Um, so it's very, it's, it's best, I guess, to um, seek maybe professional advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the following question is from my psychology, okay. so for our audience. So we like to ask, oftentimes, what are the early signs that we can notice you know, from people who are at risk of depression? Um, let's talk about it in two ways. Uh, general signs, general symptoms of depression is that you have low mood, very, very low mood mm-hmm. uh, for a prolonged period of time. Um, for example, more than two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and your sleeping pattern has been disrupted. Either you cannot fall asleep or even though you sleep, but it's a very, uh, not very restful kind of sleep. Mm-hmm. You wake up very early in the morning you might uh, feel that you have lost interest in most of the daily activities, things that you used to enjoy, you don't enjoy anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a sense of hopelessness. Um, maybe your appetite has changed. Uh, either you eat a lot or you don't feel like eating at all. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the common signs of, uh, of depression. Uh, fatigue as well is something that you might feel like I'm always feeling very tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, clients sometimes told me that I really want to go out but I just woke up in the morning and I, don't, I, I can't even lift my legs up and walk out of my room. So mm-hmm. very, very fatigued. Then we, we also have um, some, these are some of the early signs and also some early signs of depression for a different group of people might be slightly different. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, men, um, they might report less uh, of self-loading or, or self, um, self-blaming self kind of feeling. But they might report more of irritability, mm-hmm. uh, agitation. They might um, say that they are um, very, very, um, the tempo is um, changing, you mm-hmm. know, they get annoyed by little things. So they report less of a self, self-loathing kind of uh, feeling. Whereas women, they would report more of feeling of uh, guilt. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they might uh, engage in excessive uh, eating as well, weight gain. Um, they might find that um, certain period in their life, for example, um, I have clients also who are very much affected by hormonal changes. Mm-hmm, so these mm-hmm. are the, some of the, the things that might affect women in terms of depression. Teenagers uh, also report depression in a slightly different way. They might not recognize it as being low mood, they might say it again, they might be irritable, they might be agitated, they might uh, sometimes uh, uh, complain of somatic symptoms, physical mm-hmm. symptoms like headache, stomach ache. Mm-hmm. And then you have the older group of people, they usually would actually report more physical symptoms when it comes to depression. Mm-hmm. You might see them saying that I have a lot of pain here, pain there. Or you might see that these older people they have physical symptoms and they resist going for medical checkup, resist going for medication. Uh, in a way, sometimes a bit like passively suicidal. Mm-hmm. So these are just some different, mild difference in uh, different groups of people when it comes to symptoms of depression. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so I guess uh, this is the end of our Q&A sessions. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Miss Yuan. Thank you so much for. Thank you. It's our great honor to have you in this video, and Thank you. I hope our audience uh, learn something from this, and you enjoy watching this video. So, uh, remember to like our video and uh, leave your comment in the comment box below. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> we shall see you in our next video.